Hello, friends, and welcome to Sleep Tight Stories. I'd like to say hello to four-year-old Sydney. Hello to Audrin, who lives in Dublin, Ireland. Hello to Ella in Boston, Massachusetts. Hello to Daniel, who is seven and lives in Midwest City, Oklahoma. Hello to Freddie and Watson, who live in Roseville, Minnesota. Hello to Cora, who turned six on November 22nd, and her brother Lucas, who is three, from Minnesota. Hello to Mihail and Maya. And hello to Ryu, Zia, and Zoe. A happy belated birthday to Olivia Todd, who celebrated a birthday on December 9th. A happy belated birthday to Casey from Melbourne, Canada, who turned five on December 10th. A happy belated birthday to Grace, who lives in Buffalo, New York, who turned seven on December 12th. A happy belated birthday to Antonia, who turned six on December 14th, and Marie, who turned eight on December 16th. They both live in Warsaw, Poland. A happy belated birthday to Ezekiel, who turned nine on December 15th. A happy belated birthday to Lila, who lives in San Francisco, who turned six. A happy belated birthday to Henry, who turned six on December 16th. A happy belated birthday to Ruby McDevitt from Hoboken, New Jersey, who turned seven on December 17th. Happy birthday to Eden Surai from Albany, California, who has a birthday on December 19th. Happy birthday to Ravel from Cherry Hill, New Jersey, who will be turning seven on December 21st. Happy birthday to Lena, who is turning 10 on December 21st. Happy birthday to Charlie from Long Beach, California, who is turning four on December 22nd. Happy birthday to Sybil from Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, who is turning four on December 22nd. Happy birthday to Matthew from Mommy, Daddy, Big Sister Victoria, and the two cats, Buffy and Orangey, who is turning six on December 22nd. Happy birthday to Joshua from the Gold Coast in Australia, who is turning seven on December 22nd. And happy birthday to Siddharth, who is turning four on December 22nd. Lots of love from Siona, Mama, and Papa. Happy birthday to you all. I hope you have a wonderful day. George has been busy writing letters to Santa every day, asking for a massage for Mommy and a puppy for himself for Christmas. He thinks if he writes lots of letters, then his chances of getting what he wants is better. Cooper is a puppy that was left in an alley when his owners realized he would grow up and be bigger than they had hoped. Cooper cannot find any food or warmth around him because all the normal places he visits are closed. So he heads farther into town. The Santa Puppy It was Saturday, the day before Christmas, and George was at his desk writing a letter to Santa. He knew it was late to write, but he hoped that if he kept writing letters, it might increase his chances that his wish would come true. 
He had been writing letters every day since the start of December, and they all said the same thing. He had been good all year, studied hard, and helped his mother when he could. He asked that Santa give his mother a massage at the spa because she always complained of having sore muscles from standing all day. And, if at all possible, a puppy dog for him. George had been asking for a puppy since his fifth birthday. He was six now, and since he felt he was all grown up, it was time to have one. But his mother always said that he wasn't ready for the responsibility. George and his mom lived on a quiet street in a small town. Outside their house were snow-covered evergreen trees that George and his mom had decorated with blinking lights. The inside had all kinds of decorations, including a big Christmas tree and various ornaments. George's mother loved decorating this time of year. Mommy, I'm just going outside to the mailbox so that the post office can deliver this letter to Santa, George yelled as he put on his winter boots and coat. Oh, Georgie, I don't think the post office will be able to deliver it in time. It's okay, Mommy. I believe in magic. Okay, dear. Make sure you dress warm and stay on the sidewalk. Yes, Mommy. George yelled as he closed the front door and walked to the nearest post office box to deposit his letter. He was sure that Santa would read this one. Cooper was cold. He couldn't remember what being warm felt like because he had lived alone in this alley for most of his life. He was a Labrador and his owners left him here once they realized that he would grow up and be a big dog. The owner of the restaurant that bordered the alley was very friendly to him, building a shelter for him out of scraps of wood and bringing him leftovers most days. But she had been away for a while, and it had since snowed and gotten much colder. I must really find another place to sleep, Cooper thought. It's too cold outside, and all the friendly people that used to feed me have not been around for a long time. Cooper remembered his mother on the farm always telling him to remain positive whenever he faced problems, and he was trying very hard to be so. If I leave this place and can't find anywhere warm, what will I do? If I stay, I might be much too cold. But if I go in search of another place to stay, at least I have a chance, Cooper thought. I must try. Cooper left his shelter where he was curled up in a ball, shook all the snow off his fur, and started to walk out of the snow-covered alley towards the street, leaving a trail of dog prints in the snow. George came back into the house after dropping his letter off at the post office box. He took off his coat and boots, putting them neatly away, and walked into the kitchen where his mother was drinking that yucky coffee. She seemed to always be drinking. Did you have a good walk, Georgie? His mother asked. Yes, Mommy. The sidewalk was cleared, and it wasn't too cold. I shoveled our walkway as best I could before I came back in. Wow, thank you, little man. You are such a big help. I was procrastinating going outside to do that very thing. It's okay, Mommy. I know your muscles are sore and you need a rest. That's why I asked Santa to bring you a massage for a gift. 
Wouldn't that be nice? His mother laughed. You know, Georgie, Santa may not be able to deliver the other wish you asked for in your letter. Sometimes he waits until kids are older, even kids as helpful as you. I know, Mommy, but I believe in magic. George's mom sighed. Oh. Cooper had left the alley and was walking along one of the main streets in the town. He didn't know why, but unlike other times he went for a walk, there were very few cars on the road and few people out walking. All the usual places Cooper might drop in to get a snack or get his head scratched were closed. Where did everyone go, he thought. I guess I will have to walk farther than I originally planned. The kind shop owners on this street were always nice to Cooper, so he had hoped they would help him keep warm until the restaurant owner returned. After walking around the neighborhood for a while looking for a friendly face, Cooper crossed the once busy street and started walking down one of the side streets where there were many warm-looking houses. It was already starting to get dark, and Cooper was getting nervous. I need to find a place to stay soon, he thought. Cooper walked down the street, marveling at all the bright lights that filled every yard he walked by. In the distance, He saw a large man wearing a scarf and hat who had a strange-looking orange-colored nose. Isn't that human cold standing there wearing just a scarf and hat? As Cooper approached the man, his hair started to stand up straight. He didn't know why, but he started to bark at him. Cooper slowly approached the man ready to run away if he had to. Cooper got closer and closer until he reached out with his nose and boop! His nose touched snow. How strange, Cooper thought as he walked away. A human made of cold snow. Walking farther, Cooper saw a house with all the lights on and the front door open. He walked up their walkway to their door and sat there. Whenever Cooper sat quietly at the door of a business, eventually, someone would come out and say hello, give him a pet, and often something to eat. So he waited and waited. No one came. I hope they come soon, he thought. I am so cold. Maybe I need to try something else. So Cooper barked, and he barked. Finally, someone noticed him and walked towards the door. Cooper got excited and started wagging his tail. Finally, I can get warm and maybe have something to eat, he thought. The person closed the door and turned out the light without saying a word. Cooper was sad. I can't give up. I'm sure someone on this street will help me, Cooper thought as he walked down the street to find another house where the humans might help him. Okay, little man, it's time for bed, George's mother said. I left a cookie and some milk on the table, Mommy, and a carrot for Rudolph in case he is hungry too, George said as he jumped into his bed and pulled up the covers to get warm. I'm sure Santa and Rudolph will appreciate the snack. Now remember, little man, you must stay in bed and go to sleep so Santa will come. I will try my very best, Mommy. Really, I will. George said with excitement. 
It took George a while, but he eventually went to sleep. Sometime later, he was woken by a noise. The house was really quiet. What was that noise? George said to himself. Is it Santa? I better keep my eyes closed in case it is. He heard the noise again. Mommy isn't watching one of her shows that she sometimes watches when he goes to bed. What could it be? The noise came again. Is that a bark? George wondered. George quietly got out of bed and tiptoed to the house's front door. As he walked by the living room, he noticed the lights on the Christmas tree were still on, and there were many more presents. He went to the front door and looked out the small window. Sitting on the front step was a dog. Why would Santa leave my puppy on the step, he wondered. George opened the door and invited Cooper in. Hello, puppy, George said. Why did Santa leave you out in the cold? It must have been a mistake. Come with me into my room so that you can get warm. The next morning, George's mother came into his bedroom to wake him up so they could have their special morning breakfast and open presents. She was a bit puzzled as to why he wasn't up yet, as he always woke her early in the morning, whenever there were presents to open. Georgie, it's time to get up, sleepyhead. It's Christmas morning, and what is that stinky smell? George pulled the covers over his head and said, I know it's time to get up, Mommy. Guess what? Santa came last night while I was asleep. Cooper's head popped out from under the covers as he said that. A bit shocked, she said, Mmm, Georgie, where did this dog come from? Santa, Mommy, but he made a mistake and he wasn't under the tree. He was on our front step last night. So I took him in so that he wouldn't be there all night in the cold. I told you, Mommy, that Santa would read my letters. But Georgie... Before George's mother could say another word, Cooper jumped out of bed, ran over to her, and sat at her feet, tail wagging, looking up at her with big puppy dog eyes. Let me look at you, little pup, George's mother said as she got down on her knees to pet Cooper and make sure he was all right. In return, Cooper gave her a kiss on the nose, then the cheek, and then quickly all over her face. Look, Mommy, our Santa puppy loves you. Are you sure you are able to look after this puppy, Georgie? His mother asked. Yes, Mommy, I'm six now, and you always say I am your best helper. I'll tell you what. Why don't you take our Santa puppy into the bathroom and give him a bath? He has gotten a bit dirty on his way here. While you are doing that, I will get your breakfast ready, okay? Okay, Mommy, this is the best Christmas ever. Cooper agreed. And that's the end of our story. Good night. Sleep tight. <laughs>